Hey guys, welcome to Retro Media Talk. Today we're going over a 1974 intense film that kind of broke barriers in in horror and, and started a whole kind of trend in slashers before Halloween and all that stuff. But uh, and for me, it really holds up today. And uh, so we revisited it, and it is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We got Steve on the line. What's up, Steve? Uh, not much. Not yeah. much. I'm ready to talk about, uh, yeah, to, to talk about the <laughs> Chainsaw Massacre. <laughs> Texas you know. Chainsaw Massacre. Now, I've seen this movie uh, quite a few times in my life, but I haven't seen it in, a, in mm, probably five years, maybe. And I, I watched it on Blu-ray. I know you watched it on Blu-ray. But I've had probably... I bought the movie multiple times in my life. Of course, ever from VHS, uh, multiple DVDs that, that, that came out over the years. And they always had to, the first version of the DVD was so grainy. And then they started, you know, remastering it. And um, it got better each version. But the Blu-ray version was by far the best experience I've had with it over the years so what do you think about the picture quality well i mean i think um for how old the movie is and uh and and the likes i think it was pretty good but i mean i don't think it was well i mean you can't really i guess you can't really criticize it too much because when it was shot it was shot <clears throat> it was shot pretty poorly i think to begin with pretty cheaply and um the first time I ever saw this, I, I, mean, I, I this is the second time I've actually seen a movie. I've only seen it twice. And the first time I saw it, I saw it actually on a dubbed copy from a VHS. So it was pretty crappy. Wow. Which, um, uh, you know, at that time made it more creepy because it was such a horrible picture. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, compared to that, I mean, it's, you know, it's like a new movie. But, I mean... Compared to other uh, Blu-rays that uh, I've seen in the horror genre lately, it's not as good. But yeah, it was pretty. It was pretty good for I think. What is it? 20, almost a fifty-year-old movie. I mean, seventy-four. I mean, that's a whole. You know, that's uh, we were born in was, you know, seventy-one. So I, I guess we could. I don't know. We don't. Yeah, have for to all you age. ladies out there, now you know. <laughs> No, yeah, we, maybe, uh, maybe. we were born in '71. We're we're in our fifties. <laughs> maybe so, I, maybe I should have divulged that. All those fantasies that you ladies that are listening to us thinking we're these big stud uh, muffins and are like in their twenties. It's not the case. <laughs> so anyway, I was too young to remember exactly the you know the release of this movie. And what's amazing about this film is there's there's hardly any gore. There really isn't. It's all like, it's all like um, subliminal. The stuff you see is so it, it's horrible, it's dirty, but there's really no like, you know, um, penetration and gore. I guess you know with like, you know, it's all imagination, kind of yeah. like Halloween. So. Yeah, and I'm glad too because I don't. I didn't want to see Leatherface penetrate anybody. Well, I know. I guess that that, that isn't the <laughs> the best word, but I'm thinking penetration with like, you know, a hook, a chainsaw, whatever. Um, you you saw it, but you didn't see it. Well, real quick, uh, the girl that gets hung on the hook, like it looked like she got hung on the hook, and in movies today, you would see that that hook going right into the skin when he picks her up and puts her on the meat hook you think oh god that's horrible you know but you didn't see anything but you know when i saw this younger i was like that oh that was that was gross that was gory but there's no blood in there just like when he takes the chainsaw and he starts cutting up that guy you don't see any blood like right in front of her you know while she's mm -hmm. hanging on the meat hook yeah yeah um but the imagery in that film sticks with a person, I believe, because it stuck with me over the years. Like the, ever since I saw, 
you know, when, when Leatherface takes that hammer and hits that dude in the head and he starts shaking, he falls mm-hmm. to the ground and starts shaking, that image stuck in my head over the years. And then the the the, the freezer scene when, uh, you know, they open the freezer and uh, she kind of pops out, you know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh! I mean, th- those are images that kind of stick with me have sticked with me you know over the years and yeah. um and the reason being is is because um they they seem so realistic to the stories you hear about some of these real creepy serial killers you know what i mean yeah exactly there's a reason why i think this film was so like creepy and horrible for people uh, when they watched it, like back in the day, I guess people were running out of the theater and vo- theaters and vomiting and everything. But I think there's there's a reason why that happened, and we'll go over that. So, what did you think of the film? As far as did did anything stick with you, or did you just think it was eh? Okay. Um. No, I mean the movie's definitely, even though now some of it's kind of laughable um but i mean there is some like we said there is some there is some creepy stuff that's almost uh shocking right i mean you could see you could see that happening in real life by some crazy like killer mm-hmm. like psycho you know what i mean you yeah. can see that you know bashing somebody in the head with a hammer and <laughs> and stuff like that i mean that yeah. for me that's yeah probably that's probably the that's probably the most disturbing, uh, you know, thing is the, you know, the, the hammer shots, you know, that, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I think, you know, it's not a great, uh, I guess the story, um, isn't that bad of a story. I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's, yeah, I, it's... Mean, there, I mean, there is, you know, it's not some kind of really like outlandish story. I mean, there's probably really truly, uh, creepy families like out in the hills of, West Virginia that may, may still be like that, you know, <laughs> honestly. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't know. I mean, but um, the story was, uh, I guess, a believable story. It's just, for me, the acting is just so bad. By, you think so? You know, once they get to a certain point, like, you know, the beginning of the movie, like when they're traveling and they're in the van, that's bad acting. That guy in the wheelchair is just over. I mean, just I mean, it's just horrible acting. You See, know, they pick they pick up the hitchhiker. Another horrible, just horrible acting. Oh I mean, man, it, I it's loved laughable. It. I know, but I I love. Okay, here this this is where we disagree. I thought it was more believable just because it wasn't so like polished. Edwin Neal, the the guy that plays the hitchhiker, I thought, I thought he he did a great job. Cause he's just, if you see that guy in real life, I mean, he's just, he's just over the top crazy anyway, mm. but, um, but he's not around anymore. I, I don't think, or is he, he's still alive. Never mind. He's 77. Ah, uh, but that girl, uh, plays Sally. If we had a scream queen, I mean, her screams were freaking ear piercing and she they, really for me was believable well yeah no i mean yeah she was the yeah the most believable probably the only believable person for, for me yeah i mean she seemed like she was in, in, in sheer terror yeah for real for yeah. real and i think and there is a reason kind of <laughs> behind that um but yeah i mean some of that when i watched like the making and, and different things of it a lot of that was ad lib. They did do a lot of ad libbing, and I heard a, a story in the in the credits where, or the credits, uh, the special features, with Franklin, the guy in the wheelchair. He said they ran out of money and they weren't paying the actors or whatever. He said, "Look, <laughs> you either pay me, I got bills to pay. You either pay me, or you're going to have to find some other guy in a wheelchair to play this part or whatever." And they owed him four hundred dollars, and they end up cutting him a check and when he rolled down that hill i guess you could see the check in his front pocket kind of sticking out <laughs> he, he was telling that story and i'm like holy cow man four hundred dollars <laughs> a week i don't know what that would have been though in 74 but uh that 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 wasn't a that wasn't a whole lot of money you know no but, not, none of them really got paid much i, I was reading no in fact <clears throat> 
this is this was just really crazy, right? Gunnar Hansen, who played Leatherface, his he was talking about his first royalty check mm-hmm. after the movie. Like <laughs> it, the movie was making like tons of money, you know, it was huge. Mm-hmm. Uh, his royalty check came and it was forty seven dollars. Every one of those actors got screwed on that film. When they found a distributor company, a distributing company, they were um, they were mafia, I guess, and the mafia really screwed them over. And then when they tried to get, they got a lawyer and they tried to sue them and all this stuff. Well, they closed up shop and uh, went out of business or something like that. So they took their money and screwed them. That was a crazy story when they were yeah. talking about that. I I had read uh, that um, the original distributor um, was uh, yeah they turned out to be a, a front company by the mafia. Yeah, right? yeah. And they and they used it to launder um, the launder money, and they used it to launder money from uh, uh, from a move from the movie uh, Deep Throat. Oh, was that it? Which was a porno, right? Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Um, so they basically, yeah, they they didn't pay him anything. That, I think they said that the uh, they only got enough money to pay like the cast and crew members like four hundred bucks uh, each. Yeah. A- and then um, then they also lied about how much m- money the movie made, the, the the profits and stuff like that, and so. Um, yeah, so they wow. the mafia basically stole all the money and paid them pennies. Man, um, it's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. And, and then I guess New Line Cinema, they got the rights to the film, and they paid the cast extra money. Oh, did they? As, as part of I don't I don't know how much money okay. how much money it was, but it's not like New Line had tons of money to either. Right. But just in case somebody doesn't know what the this plot. movie's about. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, <laughs> roughly, and I'm I'm not really going to read uh, anything off, but these group of young people are traveling to go see their mother's grave, I guess. Gra- grandfather. Oh, uh, grandfather's grave. Yeah. And on the way there, they stop and pick up a hitchhiker. Uh, he ends up being creepy. They they kick him out of the van, out of the, and so yeah. they stop at the, they stop at a gas station because they need gas. And the guys say, "Oh, there's not going to be any gas until tomorrow." So they decide to, um, yeah, check out the grandfather's old house. Uh, yeah, and the house next door, right? Yeah, is a, a family of cannibals. Yeah, yeah. Also, at the beginning of the movie, they imply they imply this is based. on on a true story. Yeah. And I can vouch that this is not the story. <laughs> right. Uh, but, yeah, it's based on a cannibal, uh, you know, Ed Gein, that who killed a bunch of people. And and actually, he only killed two people. Did you know that? He wasn't even, like, a serial okay. killer. Okay, but, that's right, two people. But he would dig up people, and he, like, yeah. he would skin people and wear their wear their skin. Yeah, wear their skin. Yeah, yeah. And he, so a lot of movies I think have borrowed. So, but what's the other movie? Uh, he was like the original Psycho, because, Silence of the Lamb type uh, yeah. thing too. They stole because he was stealing body parts and trying to. Yes, and he kept his mother, you know, while she was rotting away, kept her in the in the room, and I think he would put parts on her or something, or uh, I don't know. I did a, a report in school on Ed Gein. On the real story, but I'm I sure the teacher remember. loved it. By the way, yeah, I probably I thought you were probably like a, a, a spawn of Satan. <laughs> and probably, probably told all, all the faculty. I had this really weird kid <laughs> write this report on Ed Gein. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch, watch him the rest of his career. He's gonna, he's gonna amount to nothing and be a killer and be in prison. That's what they all said about you. Yeah, yeah. I bring my Fangorias to school and, and a big duffel bag, Stephen King books, you name it. Yeah. Scared a lot of kids. You know, uh, you know the narration in the beginning. Uh, yes, I did not know that was John Laracor. 
Quet. Lar- Larricut from Larricut. Night Court. Yeah, from Night Court. <laughs> I did not know that. Did you know that he said that his payment was a joint? No, it wasn't. Oh, the, my the, gosh. To do the narration, they gave him a joint. Oh, man, that's too so th- funny. That was the beginning of his career. So, I mean, he probably, you know, hey. Hey, joint. Hey. <laughs> it's cr- it's a credit. <laughs> but, you, you know, uh, Toby Ho- Hooper, man, I love that guy. I mean, he's the director. And he is no longer with us. He died in 2017. But he had a slew of great horror films. Do you know what, what he did? Some of uh, his... Honestly, honest, I don't. Okay. All right, I'll name a few. Poltergeist. Really? I didn't, yeah. I didn't know that. I thought, right. I thought Spielberg did that. No, he, uh, he produced that um, uh, Poltergeist. But, um, yeah, Toby Hooper directed that. And then um, the other great horror film from the 80s, it's called The Fun House. I, no, I've never seen that. Oh, you got to see it. The Fun House is awesome. Now, he also did Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 with Dennis Hopper, which he made into a comedy. Comedy or I don't know if you've seen that. but I, was, I did. Didn't it start out? They're talking about a chili contest or yeah, something? It, yeah, it's, <laughs> it, it's a total off-the-wall film, crazy over the top. And a lot of people were pissed about it, but he – I don't know if he had a – I don't know what the deal was, but he decided to go a total different route and make a comedy out of it, comedy horror. Yeah, it's crazy, man. But Dennis Hopper, he's hilarious in it. Okay, the other one uh, early on was Eaten Alive. It's a crocodile-type movie. I don't know if you've seen that one. Uh, no, I've never heard of it. Uh, Life Force. Did you ever see that one? I've I've at least heard of that one, and I've, I've seen, like, uh, you know the dvd or the yeah. video but i've never watched the movie it's a good it's a good movie it's like it's like it's like space out in space and it's these uh these naked women that are vampires or whatever hmm. yeah it's uh uh it's pretty interesting now one of my favorite vampire films of all time that made was by a mint huh made by him yep to- oh, okay and it was a mini series on TV. Do you know what I'm talking about? Salem's Lot. Yeah, Salem's Lot. Did yeah, you like I, that one? I I remember seeing that as a kid, and that creeped the me, hell out of me. Me too, man. Remember that part where he's in the uh, what is it, um, uh, the the morgue or something? Yeah. And that one vampire comes to life, and he has to take those two like uh, tongue depressors to make a cross that's like the one yeah, off yeah yeah I, that that's stuck in my mind for years oh yeah yeah and the and the one uh, one scene that really stuck in my mind too is the, his friend that floated up to the window and they and they had some great effects on you know their eyes and stuff in that m- movie and he was tapping on the glass wanting them to let him in you remember that one no, I haven't seen that so in. long. Let me. Or, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm just saying. Let me in. But I don't know what he says. But yeah, yeah. Um, that'd be a good one to to watch again. But yeah, the original. They did a theatrical cut of it, but the original one was like four hours, almost four hours long. Yeah, because it was like a two day. Yeah. Like, uh, presentation on TV back in the seventies. Yeah, and and that was probably the scariest mini series on TV that uh, that I can think of. The only other horror movie that was made for TV that was that was pretty scary that I watched back in the day was I don't know if you've seen it, but it was Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. That was a that was a really good made for TV horror film that has cult status now. But um, it's a cult classic. It's a cult status. <laughs> <laughs> cult classic, yes. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this film, this film was one of the shortest films that that I, re- you know, I mean, the average film is ninety minutes long. The average probably horror film, you know, back in the days or whatever, they, they ran about an hour and a half, whatever. I mean, this one ran eighty three minutes. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, so it was fairly short. 
Hey guys, do you like Star Wars, Funko, Marvel Legends, McFarlane Toys, Legos? Then I got a special coupon code to save 10% over at Entertainment Earth. Use my special coupon code CRAZETV with a K. K R A Z E T V to get 10% off at entertainmentearth.com. Entertainmentearth.com with coupon code Craze TV with a K to save 10%. I don't know how many times I watched this film, but it oh I always get tense for some reason when they're walking up to the house. And when he goes into the house and the, and and um you know uh trips and you know gets hit with the hammer that scene always gets me every time yeah and then um but but i can see it a million times and then the other disturbing scene that gets me all all the time also is the dinner scene and yeah. grant and when they when they hand hey come on we're gonna give grandpa a shot you know it you know uh, killing her and they keep putting the hammer in grandpa's hand and he's trying to you know, he can't hold the hammer with the ship because so he's like a hundred years old, supposedly. Yeah, <laughs> and keeps dropping the hammer. But that's a that's a disturbing scene, you know. And yeah. you see the hammer kind of t- you know hit it her bounced in the head. off her heads a couple yeah, times. Yeah, and there is blood there, and there is blood in the end, like in her face and stuff. But really, the overall gore is not seen in that film. You don't see any bodies being chopped up with a chainsaw. You don't see any of that shit. When people were throwing up, I don't know what they were throwing up about. You know? Yeah, there was there was no penetration whatsoever. <laughs> There's no penetration. <laughs> and actually, only one person gets killed with the chainsaw in the movie. Yeah, that's uh, so. It's it's really not a massacre. Now, the cinematographer, I absolutely loved. Because there's a shot in there that I thought was unbelievable. And it's the shot with the actress in the beginning with the red tight shorts, uh, you know, the short shorts. And she's sitting on the bench and, you know, her friend went into the house and doesn't come out because he got killed with the hammer, you know, from Leatherface. But uh, she goes in there and then she trips, remember, and, and falls into the feathers and... All the chicken and the bones are, you know, in that room, and the chicken feathers and everything. And they're, and she's like, you know, scrambling on the ground trying to get up. And she's just shocked at what she's seeing. But remember when she's walking up from, she's sitting on that little swing that that swing outside, and then she stands up and she's walking toward the house. Well, the camera's like down below, and it's just gliding behind her falling her you know legs and rear end up to the house you know what i'm saying you remember that scene yeah no i i I mean it's it's just an awesome scene and i guess she had a real problem because she didn't want her cheeks showing but that but now she loves that scene uh but i guess she did not like it in the beginning she was embarrassed because she had these short shorts on and she had to walk up to the house. But the way they filmed that, they they put like a little track and the cameraman uh, was down below underneath the bench and he just followed her up and, and it kind of made the house just get bigger as she's walking. Uh, he explains that, you know, that idea he had. And I thought that was a genius shot. And he had a lot of really good shots in that film for being low budget effectively the way he filmed it was unbelievable he really had a great talent talent that was daniel pearl and the reason i'm bringing him up is he also did the remake did you ever see the remake of texas I, Chainsaw? I did. no i didn't see now it. dude you should watch that that is unbelievably suspenseful i mean it, it is awesome and i was like you know usually they they screw up remakes Mm-hmm. And we uh, went to the theater to see it, and I was literally like, holy shit, man, this is suspenseful. It's just as good as the original. I hate to say it. I mean, well, a lot of purists will be like, what? You know, but it's 
it it might be better. Actually, I think you would like it better because it is it's very suspenseful. It's very it's shot unbelievably because guess what? Daniel Pearl, the original cinematographer, was asked to come on and film this one. And he so it it's got the same good look of the original but just a a huge budget behind it. Right. So, uh yeah, you should check that out, man. It's it's a very well done remake. Probably the best of the remakes I've seen. And I did not know he was the cinematographer in that film cuz I was wondering, it's like, why did man, they really did a good job at remaking this. And that's why. So, does we it, got does it, um, does it stay pretty true to the Oh, absolutely, man. I mean, this this house is awesome. Man, it was filmed in Texas also. The original one was filmed in Austin, Texas. And this one was filmed in Texas. The actual house is still there, or not in Austin, but the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre house has been re... Uh, it was made in the, I think they said like 1800s, uh, from a, from a kit... And they took it in pieces, and it's now in another part of Texas. I forget where they moved it, but it 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 it, it was like two restaurants. I don't know what it is now, um, if it's still a restaurant or or not. But uh, yeah, people come from all over to to visit that place. It's set up exactly the same way, just all uh, cleaned up, and really looks looks awesome. But um, but anyway. Um, so Gunnar Hansen, awesome guy. He played Leatherface. He um, he wanted to be a writer. That's what he wanted to do. So he did this film. They asked him to do some more films. He passed them up. One regret he had was he was offered a role to play the uh, main guy and uh, main villain, I guess, whatever. Uh, the one we always think of in Hills Have Eyes, the bald guy. Yeah, the yeah, he, yeah. They, they wanted him to play that part. He passed up on, and that was one regret. Um, but he went. He moved out of Texas. He went back to Maine. He was originally from Maine, and he wrote some books uh, and some other stuff. And unfortunately, uh, Gunnar Hansen he died in uh, 2015. But he used to go to the conventions and stuff. He he uh, he didn't even talk. I I don't think he was like. He didn't care about the movie for for I don't know how many years, and then he realized what an impact it had on. And it was a che- Cheers episode, and uh, uh, what's her face? Diane. Diane. Yeah. She, there was something about uh, there was an episode, and he she said something about uh, I hope you. Uh, I'm not gonna say this right, but I hope you don't get me Leatherface or something like that to that effect. Something with Leatherface in the t- in the in the sentence, and he realized then he was like, "Holy cow, people re- must really know this film." He had no, no idea the the power and impact that this film had on popular culture. So then later on, I mean, he I, you know he started uh, he started embracing it more and and. Uh, uh, well, obviously later he went to conventions and met all these cool fans and really uh, loved it. And he did star in another film later, and I think it was the Texas Chainsaw Hookers. <laughs> and he did that, I guess, uh, uh, to have some fun or whatever. But uh, he he was offered a lot of roles, but the, I I, I uh, don't know why. <laughs> why he exactly took that one it was an 88 hollywood chainsaw hookers and uh yeah stars gunner hansen so lania quigley who was in all those uh kind of movies showing some skin she was in it and uh i don't know so anyway not probably the best uh career choice he probably should have did Hills Have Eyes and gone on to do some other roles. But needless to say, man, he was a funny guy. Uh, watching him in the special features, he's just a funny guy. But, uh, yeah, so he's dead. 
Um, Marilyn Burns, who plays Sally, she died in 2014. She was the one that survived. How old was she? She uh, When she died? Yeah. Uh, you know what? I don't know. I, I didn't write it down. Kirk, one of the guys. William Vale was his name. Uh, he He's still alive. He's like 71. Edwin Neal, the hitchhiker. Mm-hmm. Which he would always show it a lot. Show up. Him and Gunner would always show up in, at the conventions together. Really funny guy. Um, also, he is seventy-seven, so he is still alive. Hey guys, we got a special coupon code for our listeners. The coupon code is Retro Media. Retro Media. And you can get 30% off over at 80stees.com. 80stees.com. Guys, they got t-shirts and hoodies from all kinds of different categories of the 70s, 80s, 90s, and 2000s. You got 80s movies, 80s cartoons, 80s music, superheroes, 80s TV, fantasy, wrestling, 90s movies, video games, 70s movies and TV shows, 90s TV shows, 90s cartoons, 2000s movies. You got holiday and Christmas, and this is the perfect place to spend your money on great quality apparel. And the best is you get 30% off by using our special coupon code at checkout, Retro Media, over at 80stees.com. Now the cook, uh, the 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 guy that uh, ran the gas station, you know that. Uh, yeah. He died in 2003. James Sido uh, Sido or whatever. So I don't know how I'm saying it. Jerry, the guy that plays Jerry in there, Alan Danzing, Danzinger. He's 80, so he's still alive. John Dugan's still alive because he was like 19 playing grandpa. Yeah, they put him in that whole makeup out, outfit, uh, layers of makeup and, and stuff. And it was super hot and everything. And he is 69. So he's the youngest one out of them. And that All makeup, too, for him was so bad. Well, I it, I thought it was creepy as hell, to be honest with you. But they wanted something that looked like there he was a hundred. He might have looked like he was one hundred fifty. I don't know, but <laughs> but he was. I thought it was creepy. But yeah, he was. Uh, he he was definitely looked like a corpse. <laughs> um, but you weren't convinced. You think? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well, that Paul Allen. Partain, who played Franklin, the guy you, you didn't particular like, is probably squeaking, squeaking. Come on, Sally, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, he died too, in two thousand five. Taron, wait, Taron Mc McMinn. I get. I don't know, man. My handwriting's bad. She's the one with the the red shorts. She's still alive. Seventy one. So, yeah, there's a few alive, but mostly all dead, unfortunately. Um, so, what do you think about that? As I pour my my glass here. <laughs> what are you pouring? A little Waterloo um, sparkling water into huh. some Cabernet. Hmm. Yeah, I like a little fizzy wine. I mean, you got the director dead too. He died. Well, I mean, I mean, like I say, yeah. Think about it. I mean, it's 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 forty eight years old. The movie, you know. So, you know, people twenty, thirty years old. I mean, it's yeah. There's yeah. It's kind of sad. I mean, we've gone over this. I don't know how many times, but I, I think it's sad every time I see that. Though. I mean, yeah, we can't live forever. When I watch the special features. I almost enjoy them better than the movies sometimes because I learn so much and then I can appreciate the movie so much more and the people in it. Okay, what I was going to go back to is 
how this movie uh, affects people. There's a reason why. I think because when I was when I was um, learning how the mo- I always knew the movie is hard to make. Like it was a very it was not, not only low budget, but the conditions were horrible. Like they were in this house, right? And it was a hundred and like fifteen degrees. It was like so miserable. I guess they didn't have air conditioning there. So, I mean, on top of the lights, it was like they, these guys were roasting all the time. Now, this is what's crazy, right? It was a 30-day shoot. They all had to wear the same clothes, right? Well, they said that they stunk so bad. Everybody stunk. Yeah, I heard that. <laughs> And, and they said, especially Gunner. <laughs> I mean, he was a big guy. And they could not wash their clothes. <laughs> so every every day it got worse. So they're wearing these clothes. They're sweaty. They're they're full of body odor. Um, you can only camouflage it so much. And, you know, when she is picked up by Gunner, you got to think, I forget how many times they shot that scene when she's running out the screen door and he grabs her and picks her and drags her in there, you know? Mm-hmm. The girl in the red shorts. But they shot that scene, I don't know how many times, I can't remember exactly, but let's say 20, 30 times. Can you imagine being picked up by Gunner? Probably stinks. You got... <laughs> You got some real freaking anguish on your face. So I thought that scene was just awesome because I felt like she was really terrified. And um, she they all looked miserable in that film. And I think that's what got people to like feel miserable with them. And I think that adds to the whole horror aspect of it, you know, because these weren't this wasn't filmed in in good conditions, so it it just brought more dirtiness to the film. You felt, I mean, you you were like, man, these people. You almost feel feel like you need a shower after you watch this film. You yeah, know? definitely. What, I mean, what do you think? Did you get that impression? Like, oh god, they. I mean, they, these people look like they stink. You know, they look dirty. Oh well, yeah, for sure, for sure. Especially that creepy hitchhiker. He looked greasy. Totally greasy, man. And and if you're sitting out there, they didn't have no luxury trailers to go to afterwards. I don't know where they went to to take a shower, but they had to put them dirty-ass clothes on all the time because they said, you know, they couldn't wash them because they had to, you know, had to look like the same day were there some quirks in the film like more things that you were kind of like um you know they could have done this or done that i mean not really like that like i said it's just uh, it just you know it was um the they were like cartoon characters everybody but leatherface was like a cartoon character to me like the like of the cannibal family Mm -hmm. you know what i mean so it it was it's almost laughable now. Like I said, when I was younger, it was creepy as hell. Uh, but now it was like. Well, I mean, there are some funny parts. I mean, there you know, obviously at the dinner table, when <laughs> when she, she's screaming and they're howling, right? <laughs> she's like, ah! and they're like, ooh, ooh. <laughs> and they're getting all excited. And, but yeah, they're just they're just one sick family. And there was no women in the family except the one, the corpse upstairs, next to Grandpa. The grandma was uh, was there, just rotting away in the chair. <laughs> oh my God! The one scene that was kind of sick though is uh, when they cut her uh, cut her finger and then it let Grandpa suck on it. Yeah, that was creepy. Uh, so the conditions were horrible. They were sweaty. They were stinky. They had these hot lights on them, which amplified the heat. The shoot, I think that they said the dinner shoot was like 26 hours or something. It was like unbelievable. 
I don't know. I mean, these people, I don't know if they slept. I don't know anything. All I know is it was like 26 or some sh- hour shoot. Why would you have to shoot that that many times? I know they do different angles and stuff, but wow. I mean, that's some that's some crazy shit right there. It, it looks like it took him 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just nuts, man. It's like, why would it take that long? The one thing that kind of I'm confused on a little bit not not majorly, but I'm like, okay, so he takes her to the house when you know when she runs from Leatherface, ends up at the gas station. He says, "Oh, it's all right, it's all right," you know, and she doesn't know that he's with the family. Um, takes her back to the house. One thing I didn't I didn't understand, like, okay, they get Grandpa down, and they're they're getting ready to eat dinner and all that stuff. It's like. How long were they there? Because when she gets away and jumps out the window, it's already dawn. No, I didn't even I didn't even really realize that. To be honest with you. Well, it's 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 night, and then they're they're having dinner and all this stuff or whatever, and it's like were they sitting there all night and then? Well, it was twenty six hours. You said. No. Well, what I'm saying is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's true. I mean, when they filmed, they had to black out all the windows. It's just uh, certain little things. And then the other thing that kind of was like, oh, man, why the semi-driver? You know, when she ends up on the on the road. And that's the, that's, that part is just, just a train wreck for me, but it's hilarious. Yeah, I, I didn't understand why the, you know, the, the, the black guy gets out of the, the, <clears throat> the um, truck to help her, right? Right. And then helps her into the truck. They get away, gets her in the truck. He gets in the truck, and then they go out the other side. Yeah. Why not just start the truck and take off? Because he wouldn't have been able to get that wrench and then throw that wrench at Leatherface. <laughs> I mean, I, I was mean, dying when I saw that. I was just dying. I'm like, I even said to my son as we were watching, I'm like, what? What are they doing? What is he getting out of the truck for? And yeah, he, grab, I know. he grabs that wrench and throws it at yeah, him. I know. <laughs> He takes a, and and the only thing I could think of is why they did that was to build more suspense and say, "What the hell are you doing?" They get out of that big semi. Leatherface ain't getting in. You know he's not gonna cut a hole in that door before you take off. You know it's like take off. That's what I was thinking. You know, I and was, I, I wasn't thinking then, but I'm thinking now that maybe. They had a different plan for that scene, and mm-hmm. maybe they ran out of time or ran out of money, and so they just decided to end it. Because then, then that that guy shows up like in a pickup truck, and she she jumps in the back, right? Right. And yeah. then the movie just kind of ends. She was saying something about that. She had filmed. They had filmed that whole scene. You know, how the blood on her face and everything. And she was so relieved it was over. And then she gets a call. Like that was like wrap up you know for a reshoot or yep a reshoot and she said she was so miserable she had to reshoot that and she said the laughing in the end was her really hysterical like going nuts like she was (laughs) she was just like you see me in the end that's really really me i was just she was just like at her wits end that she had to film that whole scene again. Hey guys, do you want the ultimate iodine supplement? How about liquid B12? How about liquid turmeric in a herbal cold pressed tincture, never heated? The ultimate in detoxification, pure, powerful, and potent liquid formulas in a raw herbal extract. Totally organic. Use our special coupon code Healthy Life at checkout at globalhealingorganics.com. Use coupon code Healthy Life. So that's about it. I mean, that's the basically the movie. And let's just be honest, like a lot of 70s movies just were awesome. But some had abrupt endings. They just ended. So part two, I was expecting a continuation of the real story. Like, because, you know, back then, when I first saw it, I thought it was the real story. 
And I wanted a, a true story. And I wanted to know exactly what happens to the family. And I thought, oh, man, this is going to be great, part two. And uh, then I find out it's a total joke, and I was pissed off. But now I like it because it's it's. I I know now the Texas Chainsaw Massacre really wasn't a true story. It was based on a guy in Wisconsin doing doing this stuff, you know. So it wasn't a true story. But when I first saw it, I was like, oh god, this is a true story. Well, I guess if I was watching it in 1974 in a movie theater, and you know. Mm. You, it probably would have scared the crap out of me. You know what I mean? Because yeah. you hadn't seen a movie like that at that time. What's really always got me with Texas Chainsaw Massacre was the music. Because the music was so unconventional. It was so, like, outside the box of normal horror music. It was like a bunch of weird sounds. You know what I mean? Yeah, it wasn't music at all. Yeah, it was just, um, it was just, yeah, it was just, yeah. it was just sounds. And it was like, it was, uh, it was like, whoa, what is this? It's so. I tried to duplicate that, that sound so many times in some of my music, like, you know, um, and I got pretty close, but you know that, ee, you know that it, it sounds yeah. like a photograph being taken, but it's like it got that squeal, you know. I read somewhere, uh, you know, before we did this podcast, that um, that it doesn't contain any sounds at all from musical instruments. Um, there was some copyrighted music uh, throughout the movie, some somewhere I don't, I couldn't tell you where, but instead, uh, all of the sounds used are um, it's supposedly what animals would hear inside a slaughterhouse oh really because so i don't know i don't know if they went inside a slaughterhouse and put a mic and just recorded some sounds and then mixed them all together during the movie or, or what but toby hooper he did the music with uh, another guy he was really big into weird sound design there was no orchestrations or anything like that but it was just weird sounds and i thought damn that made it even creepier because it was unexpected like the way they did the 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 music you know you know the typical music where it builds okay here's the killer coming you know where you know you always know when the killer's coming because the music's starting to come in you didn't get that with this you know, you you didn't get it. You know, when when he's in the house, a typical horror movie would have been like coming in with the score a little bit. You know, like drone or something. You know, like kind of uh, creeping up. You know, and then Leatherface pops out. It was basically just silent. You know, and he's just hello. You know, hello. Anybody here? You know, hell, no music. You know. And then mm -hmm. just, and then when Leatherface pops out, whoa, shit, you know, right. And then you, you know, you might hear a, a cymbal clanging or king, you know, you know, something like that. And that was cool, man. I liked it a lot. Um, like I said, that music kind of whatever you call. I mean, maybe not music, but those sounds always stuck with me. Like in the beginning part when they're showing those dead bodies like from the graveyard or whatever and you hear that that sound you know whatever that i want to know where they got that sound that's what i want to know i'm gonna i'm gonna take my headphones off so you can hear this see if you can hear it i don't know did you hear the meow you know yeah i heard that yeah that's you think the that's, you think you think that's a camera clicking? Huh? Kind of sounds like a camera, but it, you know, like a. It, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I mean, it wouldn't be a camera sound, but, it, but it. When they're taking pictures of the dead bodies in the beginning, they would have that sound with it. Yeah, here, here, one more time. Hold on. Here we go. It's from the trailer. That's why it's. it's it doesn't have it all over the place, but it has in certain. Uh, Parts. Hold on. Sounds like she's getting railed. That sound right there. 
So did you hear that good? I, I did hear it. But That's a really, creepy sound. I couldn't really focus on the sound because it sounded like she was getting porked. Well, <laughs> I know. Yeah, they had, they use a lot of weird cymbal sounds in there, like, you know, like, just. And it's, How was it's, it? <laughs> I don't know. I know. Ching, ting, Sounds like you're doing uh, uh, dubbing <laughs> yeah. for. Yeah. You're doing dubbing ting, for ting, an Asian tong. movie? That, that, yeah. uh, that's horrible. You don't have to cut that out. That's racist. <laughs> Ricky Ho. <laughs> dude. Ricky I'm, Ho's I'm, awesome. I'm so pissed. I, 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 dude, um, I wanted that movie so bad. I mean, you got me that movie. Like, oh, my gosh. How many years was that? A video cassette. And I showed that movie, I don't know how many times, people. <laughs> I mean, they loved it. Uh, Ricky O was a freaking hit, but I haven't seen that in years. But yeah, I mean, it's I have a copy somewhere. I need to I need to dig it up. I can't even uh, remember where I where I first saw it, but it was I was like, this can't even be a real movie. <laughs> <laughs> that was so. Hard. But see, I love all those weird freaking like trauma movies, trauma movies. You know, like yeah. just over the top gore and everything is just they're just funny, right? Uh, like Terra Firmer, I don't know if you ever heard of that one, but uh, no. gosh, I mean, <laughs> I'd show that in my apartment, and uh, I know I had one guy that that left. He, I ain't watching any more of this. This is horrible. You know? <laughs> and, uh, just got total disgusted with it, and it was just a funny, over the top gore movie, like <laughs> Ricky O. <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> And it was just so, it's just fake, you know, it was just so fake. But it was funny as hell, you know. Oh, man, I thought Ricky, oh, Ricky, oh. I, did I say yeah. ho? Yeah. yeah <laughs> Ricky, I, oh. I, I said it was Ricky, ho for years. <laughs> Ricky, I can't even. I can't even read the case where it yeah. clearly says what yeah. it is. Yeah, I, I was just looking at it. It was like, dang it. it was, the video is currently unavailable to watch in your location. So it's available in some other Amazon Prime video location, apparently. Well, probably in Asia, right? Yeah, I probably. Mean, I mean, that sucks. But, you know, it came out on Blu-ray at one point. I'm going to have to get that. I'm going to have to get it. Well, I was going to get it, but now it's like, I, I, I don't know if, I don't know if it's, um, if it's, See the one I'm looking at now it says region B. And I thought they had a region A at one point. Yeah, they did. And it, it and now it's like it's like out of print and it's going for like 179 and 124 bucks. So I don't know why the hell uh I missed that. It was released in 2011. So I hope that like some studio gets it, uh, some other studio gets it and re releases it, man, because that is a classic, man. I love that film. Like I I'd said, I'd actually forgotten about it. Now I'm going to have to try to look into my archives and see if I can find it. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That was, a, that, was, that was so good. I got to find the. I don't know if I should burn that to. From the video cassette, I know I got it, and then burn it to a. But man, it was just. Oh wait, is this still available on DVD? Dude, it's still on DVD. I didn't know that. Well, that might be that might Four, be worth it. Then. Fourteen bucks. Oh, it's on Blu-ray too. Yeah, it was. Oh, you can't. It's not. It's not available. Well, it must be out of print, man. They're trying to. They're trying to. Somebody's trying to sell it for one hundred seventy-nine, and oh, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. But it's still on DVD, though. I didn't know that. It's Ricky O, the story of Ricky. Yeah. <laughs> People are like, what are you talking about? Well, we're talking about a an Asian film that's over the top. Uh, he's kind of like a Bruce Lee. And, uh, and uh, over the top gore with uh, just unbelievable fight scenes with with really graphic violence <laughs> yeah he, like he punches people's heads off and yeah. stuff like that it's awesome <laughs> it is awesome 
Oh, man. Yeah, he's pretty much invincible. Remember they buried him underground and they put him in that hole and gave him that little straw to breathe out? Yeah. <laughs> breathe out of and Then he busts out of that thing. I forget how he does it, but yeah. It's so over the top. It's 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 hilarious. Yeah, somebody in the review said, I heard about this movie in a grindhouse exploitation movie group on Facebook. Everyone thus I don't know, raffled about it and had had so much love for this film. This what is he trying to say? Thus, I don't know. <laughs> THST. I had to order it and check it out. Holy cow, this movie is so fantastically nuts. It's amazing. Somebody reviewed the DVD and says, uh, uh, pertaining to the Tokyo Shock version, it's a great version, even though the picture is a bit rough, but it's overall very watchable. It has Chinese and English audio with English subs, and then somebody says the Blu-ray. It's uh, uh, The movie plays uh, in full screen, uh, but if you try to change it, uh, it does some wacky stuff. So, oh, really? Just as well, I guess. Huh. Yeah, so so they're comparing it with, like, uh, Dead Alive. Do you ever see that one, Peter Jackson's film, Dead Alive? Is that the one where the guy straps the uh, lawnmower on and goes to the yes. house and chops people up? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That is a... That is a... Uh... Yeah, we watched, we watched that one one day at the at the apartment... Okay, yeah, yeah. That's like the the most goriest film ever, you know. Was, that was over the top, like Ricky O, Ricky O. <laughs> but, yeah, because uh, he's like going, he's going down the stairs, and there's just like people fun. Yeah, right yeah, in front yeah. Of the blade yeah. And lawnmower. Yeah, that's cool. That's yeah, great. you're like you got to watch this. You got to yeah. watch. It. For a while there, we were watching uh, like a horror a horror movie a week. We had like horror movie night or something. Yeah, that's like you had. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch yeah. It, and you were sitting there just laughing hysterically the whole time. <laughs> oh, man. It's hilarious. A little off track, but, you know, I guess we could wrap up the, uh, the old Texas chainsaw. Even though I take a multivitamin, I also like to take superfoods. And the best superfood I found on the market that tastes just amazing is Brick House Nutrition Field of Greens real organic superfood. One scoop of Field of Greens gives you the full spectrum of colors with fruits, veggies, herbs, spices, and more. Helps with your overall well-being by aiding in antioxidation, lipid metabolism, and glucose metabolism. Since Field of Greens is made from real foods, it's technically not a supplement. This is just pure whole foods, guys. And you can get a discount right now by using coupon code Healthy Life. Just plug that coupon Healthy Life before checkout in the coupon section and get our exclusive discount. You have to try Field of Greens from BrickHouseNutrition.com. Texas Chainsaw. If you haven't seen it, you probably aren't missing anything, but go ahead and watch it anyhow. <laughs> yeah. I say watch it. Uh, it's a. I think it's an gr- amazing film. I, I say that about every film, though. But right. We don't do any duds here. Right. Yeah, we're not going <laughs> to. We yeah, haven't we're not, done any duds. We're, well, not doing, we're not doing Steel Magnolias, so that's not. Uh, yeah. There's got to be a movie I just don't like anymore maybe we'll come across it i don't know but i always i don't know i'm just a i'm just a nerd when it comes to some of these movies and i, I hate to be like that but um there's got to be some movie i just can't stand from back in the, there's a lot of movies now like if we talked about movies now i hate most of them <laughs> i mean the, the movies now are just terrible some of them, you know, obviously. Yeah. Except for, except for the movie that uh, I'm going to make you do eventually. I Which wanna... is Top Gun. Oh, <laughs> Top Gun, Top Gun, or Top Gun Maverick? <laughs> well, we got to talk about the original because that's the old uh, one. But we got to also refer to the new one because you can't you can't talk about the original at Top Gun. Not talking about the new Top Gun. I'm telling you, the new Top Gun. I think you'd love. But. Let me ask you this: What? I I I may consider liking the movie if 
Yeah. If <laughs> is is Kenny Loggins' danger zone in the new movie? It's in a brief part in the beginning. I I the only thing I wish they would have done is repeat it somewhere along the lines. Yeah. But that was my my only slight little criticism. They should have played that again. But uh, they did put it in there. Yes. It, so it, in is in this new movie is is there like a love interest in this new movie or no? Is it all action? No, there is a love interest, and play, it, it's not play, the it's not do they that play girl. That, do they play that Berlin song? No, no. I don't See, think that's that's don't, mandatory. That's I mandatory. I don't, I don't I think, think so. No. Yeah. Um. There's a lot of good stuff from the original that ends up kind of uh, man, dude. They, I mean, they did did a hell of a job. I think you'd like it though because. Top Gun has no woke messages. It's just a a total patriotic film. You being a veteran, you should love it because it's total patriotic. So it's the Air Force, though, right? So it's, no, it's <laughs> so the Navy. He's yeah, in the it's Navy. the Navy. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Navy pilot. So yeah. what? So what? Yeah. You're a mar- you're you're an ex Marine, right? So uh, you know. You guys are all still in the. Company. Well, yes, but you know, I, I you know I get pumped up when I see like you know a movie like Lone Survivor or you know the the, the yeah one, the, those, American, oh, American yeah. Sniper oh yeah yeah Cause, cause, great cause movies that's more, that's more my uh, yeah. type of veteran movie you know. But dude, I gotta tell you, man, the flying scenes are unbelievable in this. They, I mean, it's a nail biter. It really is. So I can, I mean, I think you'd appreciate it. So what you're saying is it's a nail biter. So at some point you thought Tom Cruise may be in danger of getting shot down in his jet. I, dude, I really didn't know. I, you know, I didn't know if somebody was, I didn't know if there was going to be like a, a moment where there'd be a goose dead, you know. Now, if you told me that Tom Cruise died at the end, I'd probably be like, yes. <laughs> Well, I'm gonna watch it. <laughs> hey man, he did a hell of a job in this film. I I gotta give him credit. You know, he flew that plane too, is what I heard. So I don't know. I doubt that very much. I don't know. Hey, you know what? We'll do it. We'll do it when the Blu-ray comes out because I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna watch the special features. So I. So I know exactly. He's so short, he, he, he couldn't reach the pedals inside the, the jet. No, he flies those planes. He does. With his platform shoes on so he can reach the pedals. <laughs> <laughs> He's like 5'4". <five>, <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think it comes out, uh, I think I read November 1st. Well, it's, it's definitely coming out before Christmas. You can guarantee that. Yeah, they yeah, wanna, yeah. They want to bank some dollars on that. Yeah, yeah. All right, guys, thanks for listening to Retro Media Talk. I uh, hope you enjoyed Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I hope you learned something. And um, please subscribe to us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, uh, Red Circle, or you could Google us, or you could just say um, or type in retromediatalk.com, and uh, you could go there and find the links. And then... Um, uh, yeah. So, uh, and YouTube under Craze TV, there's a playlist that you can uh, listen to it there. And uh, it's Craze TV with a K, YouTube. So, that's about it. Anything you want to add, Steve? Um, absolutely <laughs> not. All I can say is uh, buenas noches. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. All right, guys. We'll talk to you soon. Or right, we'll talk to you next week. Whatever. <laughs> All right. Next time. Yeah. Bye. See you later.